candy. Snow White, A Tale of Terror. This movie snuck up on me. I remember going to Blockbuster with my mother and seeing this on the shelf. And I was like, what? And it was in the horror section. So, of course, a Snow White horror movie? Yes, please. And I think it had just come out. It was on Showtime in 1997. But I didn't see it on Showtime. We weren't really cable people. We had cable. But we weren't like cable people. And there was a difference. Cable people paid for like the premium channels, pay-per-view, had all the porn channels that you didn't have to descramble. We weren't those people. We had like basic cable and that was fine. Like I was mostly into watching VHS movies and going to Blockbuster and finding movies and that kind of stuff. And watching uh, like Big Chuck and Little John for obscure horror movies that I had never seen or horror movies that I had forgotten about as a kid so we weren't really cable people I didn't see Showtime or HBO or Cinemax unless I was over my grandmother's house because she always had the premium channel she always paid top tier for her cable for some reason so Snow White A Tale of Terror was directed by Michael Cohn now that name sounds familiar but it's not who you think it is <laughs> he directed When the Bow Breaks was actually which was actually a really good movie and other things I have no center on his directing style when the bow breaks doesn't feel like Snow White a tale of terror I mean it has a lot of the same suspense elements but eh. it doesn't feel like watching a Tim Burton film where you know exactly who this is this is exactly a Tim Burton movie without a doubt will you stop scratching hey hey <laughs> you need a bath as far as the actors are concerned I know exactly who these people are you know, Sigourney Weaver. Y'all got Sigourney Weaver to be in this movie to play this aging queen who is still very beautiful but doesn't want anybody to be more beautiful than her. Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver is a legend. At this point in 1997, Sigourney Weaver was a legend. She played in so many movies. She was in Galaxy Quest. I think that was a little bit after. Um, she was in Galaxy Quest. Ghostbusters? I mean, she was in Ghostbusters. She was possessed by Zool. Sigourney Weaver! You don't think of Alien without Sigourney Weaver. Every time Sigourney Weaver shows up on screen, she eats the screen. She eats it. She's fantastic in this movie. Her, her portrayal of the queen is subtle, but it's also very sensual and it's sinister. You get that she's vain. You get that she may have some mental health issues, but there's nothing where it's like, yeah, I'm an evil queen and I'm coming to kill you. It's not that. It's not the Disney, you know, hello, I am evil. It's not that yet, right? Like it's, it's, she's grand, but she's not, she's not insane yet. So Samuel is fine. I, I, he's fine. He's fine. But Samuel is always fine. Um, his, his portrayal of anything it's always kind of, I don't know, middle of the road. I, 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 he's fine. He was fine in Omen 3. He was fine in Jurassic Park. I, He's fine. I don't think he needed to be here, but I get that he's the catalyst. I feel like if he had died off in the beginning of this movie, then, I don't know, I feel like we would have, we wouldn't have missed him. It would be like, oh, look at Sam Neill and he's gone, you know? <laughs> sort of like Drew Barrymore in Scream. It would have been like, oh, look, Drew Barrymore dead. By the end of the film, he has what, like three lines? I, I don't, I, I don't know. 
he's fine. The girl playing Liliana or Lily or Snow White. Um, okay, so there are two girls. The first girl is her young version, is the little girl Lily, who out acts everybody in this movie in the first half of this film. That little girl can act. Holy crap. Like, she is really good. And I do not like child actors. I, <laughs> and I buy it. I totally buy everything that she does and everything that she's going through. When she becomes an adult, um, she is the same. And I believe they're the same person. You know how when you watch a movie, sometimes you'll see the younger version of somebody. And then you see the older version of them. And it's like, they're not the same person. You know, the, the motivations aren't the same. In this, I feel like that that little girl and the older girl are the same person. Um, Michael Cohn really directed this to make it look like this is the same girl dealing with the same issues. Um, the issues that she had as a child, she brings up to the queen um, later in the film after the queen loses her baby. I must have blamed you for so many things. I never meant to hurt you. Can you forgive me? Now, the actress playing Liliana, um, what's her name? Monica Kina. <laughs> never gonna remember that because she was in Freddy vs. Jason and some other stuff. So the beginning of this film really wants to let you know that this is not your mom, Snow White. This is not Disney's Snow White by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, carriage being chased by wolves, carriage crashes, wolves eat carriage driver, pregnant woman falls out of carriage, gets stabbed, has to do a C-section on wife, cuts out baby, blood spills, credits. Okay, okay, <laughs> and we're here. I think it's a little overkill in the beginning, but it sets a tone. <laughs> it sets a tone for this film that does carry all the way through it. It doesn't say blood, 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 Snow White. It just, and then the rest of it is just sort of la di da di da di da. It's not that. It's like blood, 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 Snow White, blood, 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 blood. I will say that after watching it and getting all the way through to the end, it feels more like Willow than it does an, uh, did the Disney Snow White film. It feels like a mixture of the two with Friday, with not Friday, with Nightmare on Elm Street mixed in. I don't think this movie is that long. However, it feels like it in the beginning because it does, it establishes the world. And the world feels more grounded than any Snow White movie I've ever seen. Um, it feels like the actual Renaissance um, and the German Renaissance, which was actually more Dark Ages than anything else because it was mostly ruled by lords who were put in place by the church um, after the Crusades. So I, I could sit here and define what the Renaissance is, but it's, it's, it's that. It's, you know, it's after the Crusades and the church has pretty much taken over Europe. <laughs> the costumes, the way it's filmed, sort of the color grading on it, it, it feels, or the, the color correcting on it, it feels, feels like you're there. Um, it doesn't really feel like a set. Sometimes it does, but most times it feels like it's that shot at some German castle. Facades probably were made for this, but it feels real, like it feels authentically renaissance so they're definitely catholic <laughs> because there's a scene where sam neil's character i can't remember his name he's he's marrying the the evil queen and and i'm and that's her name i'm i i think it was like cassandra simone something like that they don't say it enough so my brain is just going to make her the evil queen and uh they're getting married or whatever and they get married and then like in the bed like the priest is coming in and doing the holy Eucharist and people are throwing wine on the bed. For the, eh. But it looks authentic. And I think that's what sets this movie apart from other Snow White films. The other Snow White films are a little bit more washed. 
in the idea that this is a fantasy world, whereas this feels like 1500s journey. And I totally believe it with the names, with the Rottweiler for no reason. It's there, it's her companion, but then it's no longer her companion in the film, you know, because I feel like if the dog went with her, it would have gone hard fantasy then. I don't know. I mean, you know, Disney and their animal companions. Ugh. Now, the evil mirror is probably the mainstay in all of these films, in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, in uh, Snow White and uh, the Huntsman. In all these Snow White films, the evil mirror is a constant. Whether the evil mirror is sentient or not is very much a matter of direction. In Snow White and Seven Dwarves, the, the mirror has, a, has its own face. This movie sort of takes that and flips it on its head. The, the, the mirror is sentient. However, there is a moment where you kind of think that the mirror is just a figment of the queen's imagination, where you think it's just a, a part of her madness because the mirror doesn't speak to her until she loses the baby. And she's had this mirror forever, evidently, because her mother died and this was her mother's mirror. Um, and you get a little backstory about her mother and how she's, and it, it's just a sentence, but it's like you get a little backstory about her mother and how everyone hated her mother. And you wonder why, why did everybody hate her mother? You don't really get a reason, but then with the mirror being sentient, you do kind of say, okay, well maybe mom's, maybe mom was a witch. I think it loses something with the mirror being sentient. I think it really, she could still be a witch, but I feel like with the mirror being sentient, it does go that extra step over to fantasy. It is Sigourney Weaver's face and it is Sigourney Weaver acting. So it's not like a disembodied head mask. Like in Snow White, it's not like a, a uh, like that mask, what is it? Uh, tragedy and comedy mask that is actually speaking to her. It is her. It is her. And the effects are nice, but I don't know. I don't know. It feels, it feels goofy. I feel like after the death of her baby, the madness should awaken the witchcraft, right? Like it should awaken that part of her. And what she's seeing in the mirror isn't real. It's just in her head, especially with Sigourney Weaver's performance. I, I, I feel like she is totally unhinged and we will be okay with her, with that mirror being in her head. It's not the same as when uh, Charlize Theron does the witch in Snow White and the Huntsman because you feel full witch from her, from get go. In this, she's just a woman dealing with, again, some emotional and mental health issues, but she's just a woman who wants to be accepted and loved. She's, she's this woman who has, who is controlled by her vanity. So of course, when she loses her baby, the part that made her the most beautiful, of course, of course she's gonna go nuts. Why wouldn't that be the central theme of this film? I, I, I think it loses something with that talking fucking mirror. Now, the seven dwarves? They really went there. <laughs> they really now. This is Showtime, okay? Showtime goes places that other places do not go. Other companies do not. They're not going to go certain places. And Showtime really goes the distance here. Only one of these men is a little person, and I feel like that was a nod to the Disney film. And of course, they're they're gold miners, and you know they're sort of uh, greedy and and kind of mean and swarthy. One of them actually tries to rape Lily. What do I believe that seven men who have been looking for gold, hungry for gold, pretty much their entire lives, would rape a woman? if she wandered into their camp? Yeah, I believe that men are trash. Now, it does clean it up because it is still Snow White and the story has to move on. So they can't all be rapists and want to kill her. There has to be a level of 
human in these men and they really give us that. In, in original Snow White, she's she immediately humbles herself. Oh, I'm just here to do this. You know, it, where in this one, this girl, you don't, you, you, you think she's gonna humble herself, she doesn't. She's still very stuck up and still very haughty to these to these men who she looks down on and grows to like them. And you see the progression. That part is the best part of this movie. The relationship she has with these men. Wow, like the writing here feels really, really solid. Like it feels really, really solid. And I appreciate this film for going that extra step in actually humanizing these men. <clears throat> so the evil queen turns into the old crone, like in the old Snow White film. And it is horrifying, not because she's an old crone, but because we know who it is. And she found her right away. In both films, this, this woman finds her right away. And instead of just stabbing her in the back or something like that, she gives her a poisoned apple. Now that is the stupid part of this fairy tale. And it's not their fault that this is the fairy tale, this is the part of the fairy tale, but hey, look, you don't really understand why she doesn't just kill her. You don't, especially considering the, the world at large already believes that Snow White is dead. The magic is fun, don't get me wrong. <laughs> and her turning into the old crone is great and it's scary. Why don't you just stab her? <laughs> That's sort of what bogs this movie down is the actual story. You know, the story of Snow White is silly. Just kill her. That's why Hansel and Gretel is so short. You can't stretch Hansel and Gretel. Although they did do it in the new movie and it is superb. I don't know. I don't, there's no huntsman in this. The huntsman literally is one of the seven men who are dying, by the way. This queen is not fucking around. You just expect her to go, oh, Snow White, hey, how are you? Hi, <laughs> you ah, finally got it, yes! End of movie. <laughs> it's a little too sneaky when you have this witch literally twirling in a castle and knocking over statues and that affects the world in a way where it's knocking over trees in this forest. That's badass, by the way. That is a badass scene. Back to back to the whole apple thing. So Lily eats the apple, <laughs> whatever. So she eats the apple and she goes into a coma. It's very beautifully done. You know, the witch disappears and there's birds flying off of Lily. It's very, it's very <sighs> Disney just for that quick second um, and one of the men who she's falling in love with, uh, who she fell in love with, who became uh, her true love, finds her. The, the, the death of Snow White is very grim. See what I did there? Because grim is very, t anyway. And the, her true love, one of the actual seven men, well, now four, <laughs> four men because death, he actually like lifts her out of her casket, which is the same thing, as going down and I'm gonna kiss you and wake you up and it's whatever. Okay, so this this is the weak part. Her coming back to life is not with the kiss. It is with the power of his love. So he's he lifts her up and breathe, breathe, uh, breathe, breathe. You know, and she finally breathes and she's back to life and it's fine and we move on. Now we're going to the castle to kill this queen. Listen, the witch has turned the castle into a house of horrors. They really, ugh, I, I'm, I, maybe because it's the 90s, but they really didn't go as far as I wanted them to go. Like I wanted it to be a house of horrors. I wanted it to be the castle of Vlad the Impaler. Like make it so. Make it so, Mr. Crusher. Well, make it so, number one. Make it so, Mr. Wolf. Ensign Crusher, prepare to make it so. Then make it so. Make it so, Lieutenant. Make it so. That when we look at this castle coming back, we are afraid to go back in the castle. We are afraid for them to go back. Don't go, go, go back in there. Do not 
what you go back in there for? However, for the time allotted and for maybe the budget, I feel like, okay, I feel like if they traded some of that beginning of the movie for this castle scene and making it super scary and super dark, I feel like we would have, I feel like this movie would have gone down in history as one of the greatest horror movies of all time because they really could have stretched that longer and made it fucking horrifying and they don't do it and it, it upsets me ever so we see that the baby that she gave birth to is still alive because she used her dad's blood to bring the baby back to life and when you see the baby's hand it's like this little creepy it's that rosemary's baby sort of thing Ugh. the way she dies i'm fine with you know um it's of course killing the mirror kill the woman you know you kill her image and she dies there are a lot of tropes in here there are a lot of metaphors a lot of uh um heavy-handed <laughs> <laughs> metaphor tropes but that's the story the end of this movie is is it feels like willow but <laughs> it is no bath mordo versus finn Rizel. i'm gonna tell you that right now i love this movie i love the pacing i love the authenticity the acting is chef's kiss oh it is fantastic it has some problems it has that that beginning again is it's a slow burn, but I like a slow burn. I love The Exorcist, so I like a slow burn. Build this world for me, you know? I was totally into it. The beginning of that film, the opening of that film is mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing, and it sets you up for the rest of this film. I give Snow White a Tale of Terror a B-. minus. Thanks again for watching this week's episode of Monday Movie Night. I'm your host, Damian Nova. Please remember to subscribe, like, comment, and uh, ding that bell for all the updates and everything. And uh, we will be back next week. Peace. Candy, candy. <laughs>